Rob Flax here. I play things with strings, I hit stuff, and I sing. And today I want to take a look at some octave pedals and how they sound with violin. Specifically, I'm interested in a pedal that has really piqued my interest ever since it was announced, and I want to talk about its predecessors. I'm talking, of course, about the Boss Super Octave series. Beginning in 1984, Boss released the OC2. About 20 years later, in 2004, Boss released the OC3, and this was an update to the OC2. The OC2 was an analog monophonic sub-octave pedal, and a lot of bass players still really like the original OC2, its full beefy analog warp sound, to turn their bass guitars into sort of a synth sub-bass sound. Such a cool tone. The OC3 has a mode on it that allows you to do the old school OC2 monophonic thing. It's fun, it's fat, it's beefy, it's kind of glitchy, and I really like the way it sounds with violin. It also has a polyphonic mode that will do multiple notes at once, and instead of going down two octaves, very handy for this, it'll only go down one octave, but it just doesn't quite sound as full and it's digital and I don't know. For the past couple years, I haven't been using my OC3 at all. Instead, I've gone in two opposite directions. The Maris Enzo in dry mode, <laughs> that means it does a good pitch shifter, and the U235 sub-octave generator, which is a PLL synth. That does the monophonic glitchy thing, but it's even beefier and synthier. So why am I talking about the Boss then if I like these other ones better? Because Boss came out with the OC5. I want to have a listen to this and compare it to my OG OC3. See how they stack up and see if the OC5 will earn a spot on the board. I don't know. I have it. I bought it. I want to see what it sounds like. Just for giggles though, I also want to shoot it out with this little guy. This is the MXR Vintage Bass Octave Pedal. This in theory sounds exactly like an old OC2. So I have an OC2 clone, an OC3, and the OC5. And we're going to see what it sounds like on violin. My signal chain. My violin is going into this Schertler Stat V pickup. Into my pedal board, I've got the Chase Bliss Automatone uh, Benson Preamp Mark II giving a little bit of shaping, and then that's going into all of the octave pedals in question today, whether it's the OC3 or the U235 or the Enzo. And I'm going to start off by comparing just those three because I have all three of them plugged in. The U-235 is a very different beast from either the Enzo or the Super Octave. Um, it's monophonic, it's glitchier, it's really fat and juicy and synthy. It's really nice for turning a little pluck into a big fat bass line. You can hear that it sort of fizzles out. If I turn on a fuzz before that, here's the uh, Ranger effects bleep into the U-235. <laughs> I 
love the way those two work together. Pizzicato, it's just, it's a totally different instrument. Really fun. The Super Octave is doing a pretty good job of polyphony, and honestly, it kind of stands up to the Enzo. The Enzo I have on here because it does so many other things. It's a synthesizer, it's got an arpeggiator, it does crazy pitch shifting and reverbs, it's got tremolo and ring mod and chorus and digital delay. It's a whole beast of its own, but nine times out of ten, because I have this massive pedal board set up, I'm usually using it the way I would use my Super Octave. So, let's try the Super Octave now in mono mode. I'm going to switch it over. So now it's in OC2 mode, and uh, you can see that the dial's there. There's a direct level, an octave 1 down, and an octave 2 down. Let's see how that stacks up compared to the U235. Nice. The OC3 is pretty fat and juicy. Um, the U235 is still fatter and juicier. It's very much a subby subby thing. And it's only doing two octaves down with a little bit of the dry. And the super octave has some octave down, some two octaves down, and some dry all blended together. The big problem with both of them is as you go higher up in the register, it doesn't really track as well. I'm going to use the bow and show you the point of failure for both. We'll start with the OC3. U235 is the uh, the clear winner here. It just goes another half an octave. This uh, the super octave starts to fart out and stops being a bass line above D, right? Like it can almost do it, but it's struggling. The way a PLL works, it's getting all the way there. It's just listening to the waveform and doing its best to uh, make a sub out of that. But it does so rather reliably until you get above third position on the E string, at which point, why are you trying to drop that down two octaves? Just don't. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So for my intended purposes of playing my violin like a tiny bass, the U235 has a slight edge. For playing in dr like polyphonic dry mode, Again, I think I usually use the Enzo, not because I strongly prefer it over the OC3, but because it already kind of does a comparable job. But let's find out how the new Super Octave OC5 stacks up. That's got some new stuff. Let's open it up. I haven't taken it out of the box yet. I've had this for a month now. And I haven't even had a chance to unbox it. So here's my first impressions. He has the box. I love the gigantic manual. Look at this manual. Oh, it's multiple manuals. Okay. Owner's manual and using the unit safely. <laughs> like we want to do that. Mm, that new pedal smell. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it's so sleek and shiny. Look how shiny that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Boss Octave. <laughs> this one's made in Malaysia. The trade-off. This pedal has something that the Super Octave does not, and the Super Octave OC3 has something that this does not. The Super Octave has an overdrive distortion sound on it, which I don't use that much, 
My bandmate in the group Billy Wilder, Avi Salloway, he uses his OC3 as sort of a dirty solo sound that he gets a great tone out of that thing. I don't use it that much, so instead, this one has a feature that I find very interesting, which is the lowest note feature. In other words, you can dial this in, in the polyphonic setting, to uh, set the range at which everything above that doesn't get octave downified. This is useful if you're a guitarist and you want to have just your low E string or E and A strings being bass notes and then regular guitar on the upper strings. You can sort of do a, a pseudo Charlie Hunter effect with this. We'll mess with that, but first things first, let's swap it in and see does it sound just as good. Sorry, the U-235 smokes it for monophonic synth bass sounds. That's, there's a reason I switched over to the U-235. Okay, fine. So, let's see the range of this. Does it crap out around the E as per vintage style? Oh yeah, that's monophonic. <laughs> I tried to do stuff that was double stops, sixth, and it just went. <laughs> Tracking on it is very good. Um, not quite as beefy as an analog thing, but pretty darn good. Okay, let's switch over to poly mode and play with the octave up and see how we like it. Okay, so right away I'm hearing a little bit of that upper octave and it's it's rather pleasant. It's not quite as metallic and cutting as say the Pog or the Pitchforks octave up. Um, usually I don't like to use octave up digital effects uh, with the violin because it's already so high, but blend it in here. You can see where I've got the knob set on this. Uh, let me mute the mic and play with the bow and see how it sounds with some double stops. Okay, I couldn't help myself there. That was a little bit of the bleep and a little bit of phaser from the synesthesia stacked with the super octave OC5. That's that's really quite nice. Uh, conclusions, uh, the OC5 is about as good as the OC3. I don't think it's a clear favorite. I think you might actually prefer the OC3 for some things. I think it had a little more beef, but to be honest, neither of them is a clear winner for the monophonic sub beef. I give Parasit Studio the definite nod for that. Their PLL chip synth pedal, the U235 sub octave generator, 
remains the number one in my heart. It's glitchy and not really as easy to play without error. You have to play to the pedal, but the sound is so worth it. In the contrast, the OC5 is effortless. There's no lag, and it's it does a pretty good cello impression, sort of pseudo synth cello. One more time, just that. So why don't we try it to set that poly mode with the highest or lowest setting so that um, the G string is the only one that gets octaved and the rest stay the same. Could it be that it could turn my violin into a split instrument? That is kind of cool to have a little bit of beef on the low end, just some low end where the low end counts. That is a neat effect. I will say it does a slightly better job than the Enzo at triple stops. Let's uh, give it the full range and just, I want you to hear what happens to triple stops. The Enzo in dry mode sometimes gets a little wobbly. Check it out. No problems at all, the OC5 tracks flawlessly, never a missed trigger, no problem with really complex, crunchy chords, it can handle them, no problem. Okay, swapping that out now for the vintage bass octave. So around the same range, around the E string E, it's doing a little better than the OC3, about the same as the OC5. Both of them are pretty good. The one thing this has, in addition to being small and blue, is it has a mids boost button. So let me try that for a second. See if that changes anything. Again, not really mids here, but let's see. For my money, I think the OC5 is the new champ. The poly mode with that octave up, little hint of shimmer, not too much, is really nice. Leave a comment. What is your favorite octave pedal? Have you tried the OC5? Do you prefer it? Do you like the Pitchfork? Do you like the Pog? Do you like the Walrus Luminary? What's your favorite and why? Leave a comment. Let me know if there's another pedal I haven't seen that I'm missing out on. I'm desperately curious to know the best octave sounds for violin. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It would be really helpful if you do so. I've nearly made it to 1,000 subscribers. Maybe you will be the person who pushes me over the edge. Either way, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. That helps with the algorithm gods. If you'd like to support my videos and my music and follow me and get more exclusive stuff that you can't get on this YouTube channel, please visit patreon.com slash robflax. 
and you'll find all my cool stuff there. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.